Hi, welcome to Limitless Kids. We're your hosts, Cody and Tersha, and this is our dog actor named Lily. Lily. Hi, Lily. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk to you about a story in the Bible that you probably heard about before. The story of the Israelites in Egypt. So, the Egyptian, nope, the Israelites <laughs> had been slaves in Egypt for 400 years, which is actually a really, really, really bad thing and a really, really, really long time. But fortunately, God cares so much about the Israelites and he did not want them to be stuck in slavery. So he called a guy named Moses. Moses had a staff. And then Pharaoh, the big bad guy in Egypt, he would not let the Israelites go. No, he no. was a real bad guy yeah. and he wouldn't let him go. And so eventually Moses had to come and there were a whole bunch of plagues that happened. Things like, you shall not pass. Hail. <laughs> and darkness. And lice. I'm so itchy. <laughs> <laughs> Disease livestock. And then after the plagues, Pharaoh finally said, you guys can go. Peace. So Moses, so Moses all... he packed up all his belongings, and all the Israelites packed up all their belongings, and they plundered the Egyptians, and then they left. <laughs> and they went on a really, really long journey, and started walking towards what God said was the promised land. <laughs> and it was going to be this amazing land where they would be free and they were all, well, they were supposed to be excited, but they weren't really excited. They were kind of just nervous. Can you say milk and honey? <laughs> and they're... They arrived at the Red Sea. The Red Sea. <laughs> Was that my bad? That's, that's funny. That's hilarious. And all of a sudden, who decided to come back and start chasing after them? Who do you guys think it was? Oh my gosh, it's the Egyptians. Oh, You're right. It's the Egyptians. You guys got it right. Pharaoh sent the army. They're coming. So now the Israelites are like, ah, God, why did you take us out of there? They're going to kill us. Moses, why did you take us out of there? <laughs> You're supposed to be Moses and brave. I am Moses. <laughs> so they got to the Red Sea and Moses asked God what he should do. And God said, Moses, raise your staff. So he did. He raised his staff and... And the Israelites and the children of Israel could walk through the Red Sea on the dry land all the way to the other side. And there's not the way of the Jedi. <laughs> The Egyptians started chasing after the Israelites. And do you guys know what happened? Of course you do. The Red Sea unparted. What is it called? Just fell came, out? Came back together. Um, <laughs> fell on joined, um, Closed. Closed. It closed. <laughs> We're going to take a short break from our filming to ask you guys, how are you today? How are you doing? I can't hear them. You good? <laughs> All right, next in the story, you guys, Moses finds 12 spies. And he says, I need you to go into the land of Canaan, which is the promised land. And I need you to look at how good it is. Because God told us that's our land and it's going to be wonderful and it's going to be amazing and all that stuff. So... These 12 spies, they go into the land. And then what happens, Cody? They see giants in the land. Giants. 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 
giants. All right. So the 12 spies come out. Ten of them are terrified of the giants, even though they see the wonderful milk and honey and fruit and all the wonderful good things that God Big did fruits. promise them. And do you guys remember what just happened to them? God just parted the Red Sea. It was incredible. But anyway, they're still scared. And so they're like, no, we can't go in there. We're too scared. But two guys, two, decided that they could trust God. And even though there were giants, they were like, even though there's giants, my God is way bigger. God is way stronger. And so therefore, we are going to trust God. Their names were Caleb and Joshua, and they were really faithful guys. So... Because Caleb and Joshua and Moses were the only ones who trusted God, the rest didn't, and they all rebelled. And even though God had showed himself faithful, he had been providing them food from the sky every single day. He had taken them through the Red Sea. He had shown them all these amazing things of how powerful he was, but they were still scared. Yeah. Yeah. And so, because of that, all of the Israelites were not allowed to go into the Promised Land, and they had to wait and the only ones who ever got in were Caleb and Joshua 40 years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else that? All right, kids, we're going to get serious here for a second. You see, the Israelites, they made three really uh, bad mistakes. The first one was that they doubted themselves. It says when the 10 spies, 12 spies, when they came out, 10 of them said that we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. They saw themselves as so small compared to these giants that they could just get squished. The second mistake they made was that they doubted God. The God that brought them through the Red Sea out of Egypt, the God that brought them through the wilderness all the way to the land of Canaan, the one that guided them by a, by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. That same miraculous God, they began to doubt that he could, he could bring them into the promised land. And the third thing is they began to doubt each other. They began to doubt that God could take all of them in there, all collectively, to take this land that he promised them. So today we want to encourage you to do three things and not make the same mistakes as the Israelites. The first thing is, have faith in yourself. Do you know that God created you? He sat down and he decided, you know what? You were worth creating. You are somebody that God thinks about every single day, all the time. The thoughts that he thinks about you are always good. And it says that his thoughts towards you outnumber the grains of sand and he knows the number of hairs on your head. That's pretty crazy, right? So he thinks you're important and it's important for you to remember that you are his kid. If you've put your trust in Jesus and if he lives inside of you, you are his kid and you are so, so important. You are so valuable and you can do anything with God. The second thing that's important is that you need to have faith in God. You need to remember that he is the God who performed all those miracles in the Bible that we talk about. You hear about them all the time and some, some of them sound so crazy. They sound like the most amazing action movie you've ever seen, but they are all true. Every single thing that's in the Bible, God did. He is that big. He is that amazing. He is a God that is worth trusting, and you should have faith in that God. And then the third thing is, you should have faith in each other. I know sometimes it's hard to do that because, you know, maybe right now you're looking around and there's some people who are really freaked out about what's going on in the world right now, and they're acting kind of selfish and they're acting kind of mean, but here's the deal. We need to have, have trust and faith in each other. And we need to show each other. If you've got some friends who are really freaked out right now, you just stand up with them and you say to them, you know what? I know it's scary times and it's okay to be afraid right now. I understand if you're afraid, but we got to remember who our God is. We got to remember who we are and we can help our friends to see that we don't need to have fear. We can have faith in who God mm -hmm. is. And that together, if a bunch of us would stand up, we can be like this amazing army that tells the whole world how good Jesus is. And I encourage you guys to be part of that army. And right now, even though you're sitting in your home today and not at Sunday school with us, guess what? There are tons of other boys and girls and moms and dads and brothers and sisters and all kinds of people all throughout the world who are watching um, church on TV today. But together, we can all know that God is with each and every single one of us. And together, we can all be like that amazing army that God made 
um, the Israelites. And so we encourage you guys to remember those three things. Have faith in yourself, have faith in God, and have faith in each other. And we love you guys, and we hope that today has helped you. And we encourage you, if you um, have time this week, why don't you go and check out that story? It's in Exodus, um, and then also the part about the spies is in the book of Numbers chapter 13. So we encourage you to go check out those stories. Maybe you could sit with your parents and read them tonight. So we love you guys. Talk to you later. Hi guys, welcome to Kids Church. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to stay positive in the midst of everything going on with the coronavirus. So I'm going to be giving you things to be thankful for and giving you some fun ideas to do while being bored at home. Let's hop into it. The first thing on our list is encouraging words and Bible verses. I'm going to read you an encouraging Bible verse. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This verse is so encouraging to me because when I'm anxious and stressful, I can read this verse and know that God is with me wherever I go. Cassie has something to say. Come here. So... If you're at home and you have friends that are lonely, this is a great thing to do. While so, you're bored at home. Yeah. So you get a piece of paper, write down this Bible verse. Or then, encouraging words. And then get um, some coloring or paint. And then just do a beautiful picture, whatever you want. And then just email send it to people and you can do it to friends family members um grandparents anybody friends anything cassia cassia goldfish <laughs> nice catch <laughs> is this thing on is this thing on hello oh hi there hi kids needs to focus come on come on let's go let's go hi kids so the second thing the second thing on our list is making a thankful jar. Now, a thankful jar is so good because it just has paper in it. Just paper. Isn't that so cool? So you just have paper in it, and you're going to get papers like this. And every day, anything, if you're thankful for something or grateful for something, even if something is super cool in your life, you just write it down with the handy-dandy pen, pencil, anything, crayon, anything. You write it down on the paper, and you just fold it up and put it in the jar, close the jar, and you are good for the day. That is a cool way of stuff to do during this boring time. And the cool thing about the jar is later on in the year or at the end of the month, you and your family can look through the jar and see all the cool and amazing thing that, things that God did in your life. The things that he showed you by, being by you being thankful or this is the cool things you got to do because God is so good and he allows us to do some very cool things. Oh, I was just sleeping. I'm so sorry, guys. Well, sleeping is such an important thing. Do you know why? Because sleeping helps you be able to do fun things during the day. If you don't sleep, you're going to get tired and lazy. So sleeping, and sleeping also gives you a bunch of energy, and so you're ready for the day. So I encourage you to rest up during the day and take some nice naps. It's really nice. Nanny Nai! 100! Let's go! Okay, so God gave us really strong bodies and really so, strong muscles to do lots of workout to get strong. So it is very important to work out every day because it'll make your body strong and healthy so that you can last the whole day. It gives us energy dur during the whole day. But do not forget, you need to drink water throughout the whole day so you, that you don't get dehydrated. And last thing, workouts are so much fun. Me and Cade, we work out all together. All, we work out together all the time, and it is so much fun, and it's something to do while you're at home. Let's go! Hi, guys. So this is the second to last thing on our list, sadly. Art, crafts, so much fun. Look at this thing. My sister drew this, and she made an elephant. I love elephants. Isn't that so cool? And then she made this. So, 
while you guys are bored at home, sitting on your beds, I encourage you to go and color. Color a unicorn if you want to. Color anything you want because at the end, because everybody is so artistic, so you just need to use those abilities. Go on a blank piece of paper right like that and then just draw. Use your creative minds that God has given you and just draw something very cool because art is so cool. Oh, hi guys. You guys might think Josh is bored at home. But no, I am not bored at home because I have a dog. No, but look, I come outside and I go play basketball or jump on the trampoline because it's fun and you get to have fun in the sun. So, my encouragement of something to do while you're bored at home is go outside, get some sun, go play basketball, go, go play soccer, go dance in the gr on the grass because it's something very fun and it's physical and very fun to do. So I encourage you to do that. Let's go. Soccer. Hi guys, perfect timing. I'm just finishing up my water as I was thinking over all of the stuff on our treasure map today. So this is it. Check it out. We're doing the color hunt with three different colors today. So we've got the red, the green, and the rainbow. Can you see that? So first we need to come up with a red item to represent the red sea. Hmm. Any red items in my house? Oh, I know. My mom has some red flowers that are in the bathroom. Let me go get some. I'll be right back. We're in the bathroom. Look how nice those red flowers are. Let's just see if we can borrow a couple. Perfect. Okay, I'm so excited about our red item. Look how cute they are. So, we've got our red item to represent the Red Sea and how God will protect you no matter what because he guided the Israelites out of the Red Sea. He parted it for them. He guided them out and he held the waters back. So in any time of trouble, we can just look at these red flowers or anything red that you guys found in your house and we can just remember that God will always protect us and he will always guide us out of tough situations. Hmm. Next up on our list is something green. We need to find out something green in our house. Can you guys look for something green in your house while I think of something in mine? Hmm. Oh my gosh, it's Perfect! We can use my water bottle that I was drinking out of already. That's awesome. So, for the green item, every time we look at our green item this week, we can remember that God's army is so powerful. And he and God and his army and his protection and power are so much stronger than anything we face. With God by our side, we can conquer anything. Jesus' name is more powerful than anything that we face. Any army, anything that comes in our way, God is more powerful. Now, we have one more item to find, but this one's going to be kind of tricky. Hmm, something rainbow. Hmm. Maybe I can look in my arts and crafts bin because my arts and crafts bin has a lot of colors. Let me go check it out. Okay guys, I'm at my arts and crafts bin. Let's go look. Hmm, what do we have in here? Oh, we've got some crayons. Crayons are rainbow, maybe we can use that. Hmm, let's see what else we have though. Hmm, <laughs> a gal? It's like a football. What the heck? Ooh, duct tape. I love some fancy duct tape. Hmm, what's this stick? Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. I love it. It's so fun. Now, whenever I'm pr playing princess or fairy with this perfect rainbow wand, I can remember that 
God has a promise for my life and a plan for my life. And if I listen to him, then I can get to the promised land. Because when Noah was sent rainbows after the flood, God wanted to send him that rainbow because he wanted to give Noah a promise. He wanted him to see a rainbow and just every single time remember God's promises. And so we can do that too. We can look at the rainbow or our rainbow colored items in our house and we can know that God has a promised land for us just like the Israelites. He has a plan, a purpose for our life and he wants to use us for big, big things. That's it, we found all three items on our treasure hunt list today. We found a rainbow wand for God's promises, some beautiful red flowers to represent the Red Sea and God's protection, and we also found this green cup to represent God's army and of course his protection like in the Red Sea. That's all we have for today. I hope you guys were able to find a red item in your house, a green item, and a rainbow item. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.